Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about a conversation I had the other day. A lady I know asked me, why do you speak of parquet margarine as a modern margarine? Well, here's what I said. Parquet is a modern margarine because it's so different from the margarine of a few years back. You see, parquet margarine is made by Kraft. And Kraft is famous for its fine quality, delicious tasting foods. Yes, delicate, appetizing flavor is the big reason why parquet margarine is different. It's grand both for table use and for cooking because it tastes so good. Another reason parquet margarine is different is that it's a reliable, economical source of important vitamin A. Summer and winter, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. And that's something every mother and housewife should be glad to know. Besides, parquet margarine is wonderfully wholesome and nutritious. Why, it's one of the best energy foods you can serve. But why not find out how deliciously good this modern margarine is yourself? Tomorrow, ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now, let's visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve. Good morning, Uncle Mort. Good morning. Oh, is that one of your Christmas shirts you're wearing? Oh, no, Marjorie. And that reminds me. Next year, I hope you're more careful about giving my sizes to Aunt Sylvia. She sent me a 13 shirt and a pair of 17 and a half socks. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. Huh? But you know Aunt Sylvia. Yeah. Why, she still thinks I'm a baby. Yeah? She sent me a pound of gumdrops and a Mickey Mouse wristwatch. <laughs> oh. oh, Bertie, are you busy? Uh, no, Miss Marge. What can I do? See if you can sweep up some of the pine needles under the tree. <gasps> it's shedding like a $19 fur coat. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the kind of coat I got from a gentleman of Queens last Christmas. Oh, well, that's too bad, Bertie. Oh, I don't mind so much. The friendship only lasted till the 4th of July, but the bunny coat didn't start to give out until long by Labor Day. <laughs> Well, I hope you have better luck with your uh, current boyfriend. Oh, yes, Mr. Gillsleeve. Current is right. That boy's a real live wire. <laughs> he done treated me to a course in ten lessons in rumba dancing. Oh, well. Bertie, are you going to learn to rumba? Oh, yes, ma'am. I've been rumping for years, Miss Marge. <laughs> I'm just going to improve my technique. Yes. Yeah. Professor Guadalupe, that's my rumba teacher's name, Stonewall Jackson Guadalupe. <laughs> He says I'll be a fine rumba dancer just as soon as I learn to put about twice as much energy into half as much work. Yeah. I can see what he means. Uh, what else did you get for Christmas, Bertie, besides this uh, course in the Cuban can-can? Besides which? Uh, in addition to your rumba coaching. Oh. Well, I received a bottle of the loveliest smelling lavender cologne yes. and a box of the loveliest looking lavender face powder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, indeed. I I'm at my stunningness in lavender. Yeah. <laughs> Do they match that perfume you had? <laughs> the last time you saw Harlem? Yeah. No, ma'am. <laughs> this is a new kind called Chattanooga Woo Woo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Or tuxedo unction. Yeah, tuxedo unction. <laughs> well, I guess I better get up these pine leaves with the back. Yeah. I just came from Piggy Bank's house, and you know what? No, what? He just gave me a... That is, he wants to give me a, a swell Christmas present. Uh, but, Leroy, Piggy gave you a pair of roller skates for Christmas. Well, he feels it wasn't enough, so he wants to give me a swell puppy, and boy, is it a cute one. Uh, well, if it's so cute and swell, Leroy, why is he giving him away? Because Piggy's father won't let him keep it. He won't? What's the matter with it? Oh, well, nothing's wrong with him. It's Piggy's father. He's got allergics. Yes. Sam, it's all right for me to have him, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Is it a very uh, big dog? Oh, tiny? Hey, he's just the right size for this house. Oh, a uh, two-story dog. Eh? Yeah. What kind is he, Leroy? Oh, brown with white spots. 
What are you saying, Uncle Mort? No, I mean, what kind of a dog? A boy dog. Uh, no. How about a dog? <laughs> well, I've always thought that a dog is a wonderful companion for a young man of your age, Leroy. Mm. Gee, so do I. Yeah. Uh-oh, here comes more work for me. <laughs> No, Bertie, this dog is going to be Leroy's responsibility. You're to take care of him yourself, young man, understand? You bet. Yeah. You better, because I know from experience when a dog comes snooping around the kitchen for a bite, it ain't particular what it takes that bite out of. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Bertie. A dog is good for a boy. Yes, I recall the dog I owned when I was Leroy's age. Good old Hector. I can remember when he was a pup. <laughs> what kind of a dog was he, Uncle Moore? Uh, Hector was a pug dog. Yeah. You know, the kind that looks as if it's always standing with its nose against a butcher shop window? Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, we had great times together, Hector and I. Almost broke my heart when I lost him. Was he run over, Uncle? No, Marjorie. He got too big to ride, and I traded him for a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like a little canine pal. Oh! Oh, oh. oh goodness to mercy, what's going on in the cellar? Yes! Yeah. What can it be? Oh, huh? uh, that? Well, it might be my new dog, Tiny. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I left him in the cellar till I sold you on the idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think we better investigate this idea of yours, Leroy. Come on. Sure, and wait till you see him. He's the cutest pup you ever saw. Oh, really? Uh, uh, yeah, turn on the lights, Leroy. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my goodness. He's chewing up all my old clothes. Here, Tiny, come on away from there. You want to get sick? What? Here, Tiny, here, Tiny. <laughs> Oh. Get off of me with those dirty paws. Ye gods, look at the size of Tiny. He must be a great day. Uh, oh, no, Uncle, he's only half great day. What? The other half is St. Bernard. St. Bernard. <laughs> His idea of heaven is a back porch full of pork chops. <laughs> yeah, look at him. The way he goes at it, you think meat grows on trees. You could get another ten pounds, Uncle. It's not until I arrange for a wholesale raid at the butcher shop, Leroy. It down, Tiny, down. Every time he hears me mention butcher shop, whoop, quit licking my face, Tiny. And grab his tail, Leroy, before he knocks me over. Get down, doggy. Come on. Yeah. Thanks. Say, hey, he's a smart dog. Every time he hears me say B-U-T-C-H-E-R, he wants to go chop shopping. <laughs> you should have seen us down at the M-E-A-T market. What happened? I tried to train him to carry the package home in his mouth. Didn't it work? No. Tiny thought it'd be easier to carry it home in his tummy. <laughs> well, I guess you can't teach a new dog old tricks. <laughs> say, it's getting cold out here. Let's go inside. Yes, all right. Hey, come on, Tiny. You can sit beside the fireplace if you promise not to chew the rug for dessert. <laughs> yeah. Don't keep that door open so long, please, Mr. Gillsleeve. This cold well is hard on us tropical folks. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right, Bertie. <laughs> yeah, come on, Tiny, come on. Uh, quit sniffing around that icebox, dog. Ah, uh, Tiny, this way. No, no, keep away from the stove. I guess he's admiring your cooking, Bertie. Well, he can admire till he's blue in the face, Leroy, but he ain't gonna get none of that there roast. I'm not cooking myself to a shadow over a hot stove for no truck horse of a great Bernard. <laughs> yes, look at there, Bertie. He loves you. Uh, get away from me, dog, before I smack you with your skillet. <laughs> but he, he's just playing. Well, if he takes one step closer, he's gonna be playing a dog horse. <laughs> Come on, Tiny. Let's go into the living room. The living room? You gonna turn that into a kennel? Oh, no, Bertie. We'll be careful. Careful, he says. What does a hundred and fifty pounds of giddy puppy know about being careful? <laughs> uh, don't get excited, Bertie. You just take care of the kitchen department. This dog is Leroy's responsibility, and I've got a feeling in my bones. Oh! I shouldn't have mentioned bones. <laughs> Uh, get him off of me, Leroy. Uh, grab his collar. Come on, Tiny, this way. Yeah. Come on, Bertie. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to start training this pup not to jump up and lick you every time you mention F-O-O-D. How do you do that, Unc? Well, you make him understand you're the master, Leroy. Look him straight in the eye and say, look out for that ashtray. Uh, oh, his tail rusted off the end table. 
<laughs> Sweep it in the fireplace, Leroy, before Bertie sees it. Okay. Yeah. Hey, be careful, Tiny. Yes, be careful, Tiny. Your tail will wag the room into a shambles. <laughs> Gee, maybe we can teach him to wag his tail up and down instead of from side to side. <laughs> I, I don't think it would work, Leroy. Why not? Well, I'm afraid that would go against the grain. <laughs> <laughs> he's not only smart, he's a mimic Now come on, Tiny, lay down like a nice little doggy <laughs> Oh, not over there, keep, keep away from that Christmas tree Look out! Of <laughs> oh. all the clumsy, fumble-footed hounds Get him out of here quickly before he does any more damage Yes, Uncle Morton yeah. Come on, Tiny, you gotta go out Yeah Sorry, old man. It'll take him a little while to get accustomed to our furniture, Uncle Mort. Yes. Yeah. Well, the furniture will hold out that long. <laughs> Help me get this tree back on its feet. Help! Stop that! Come here, come here! Get away from me! Oh, now what? Well, and I bet I know what it is. But do something! Quick, please! Gee, Bertie, what you doing standing in the sink? It's that dog of yours, Leroy. Look! Uh-oh. Uh, what did he do? He just chewed up the roast I had ready for dinner, and now he's drooling at me. <laughs> Why not, Leroy? I know I'd welcome a nice, big, comfy, warm piano box if I happen to be a dog. On a night like this, thank goodness I'm not. But don't you think you'll get lonesome? <laughs> lonesome? Not if he keeps howling like that, he won't. But, uh, but suppose somebody complains. Let him complain. I've had a hard day trying to cope with that baby buffalo, and now I'm ready for bed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll probably have a nightmare in which Tiny takes me for a walk, drag me along at the end of a leash. Oh, that'd be awful. I know it. That's what he did earlier this evening. <laughs> well, hey, good night, Leroy. Gee, I wonder what that can be about at this hour of night. You guess. <laughs> uh, hello? Uh, who? Uh, yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. He's one of the neighbors. Uh, what dog are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, that dog, yeah. <laughs> no, it's my nephew's. No, it isn't my nephew, it's his dog. <laughs> what? No, I won't take him in the house. I'm training him. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you. Is that so? Well, you can go there yourself. <laughs> Where did he want you to go, Uncle Morse? It's neither here nor there, Leroy. Oh. <laughs> Quiet. Let's go to bed now. Yeah, oh, why did Alexander Graham Bell have to do this to me? Yeah, hello. Uh, look, mister, I've had enough out of you. If you don't bo stop bothering me, I'm going to call the police. Oh, this is the police. Uh, well, hello, Sergeant. Uh, what can I do for you? Oh, sure. I'll be glad to. Right away, Sergeant. Goodbye. Leroy, I've changed my mind about Tiny. You run along outside and bring him in. That'll keep him quiet. Oh, boy, can I keep him in my room, Uncle Mort? You didn't think I'd let him sleep with me, did you? <laughs> oh, hello, Marjorie. Hello, Uncle Mort. Look what I found under the rug in my room. Three bones and an old corset. Oh, more of Tiny's work. Yes, he also ate all the flowers I received for Christmas. Two pairs of silk stockings and almost a pound of my bath soap. Yes. That dog did that? Oh, he isn't a dog. He's an ostrich. Yes. <laughs> now, now, my dear, we must have patience. Oh. Is that you, Leroy? Yeah, me and Tiny. I'm going to take him upstairs to my room. You're fine. Good night, Leroy. Wait, Tyler. Good night, Mark. Good night. Good night, my dear. I'm going to bed myself. Oh, my. I feel as tired as last month's lettuce. Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, who, uh, who's there? Who's that under the bed? Is that you, Tiny? Oh, my, we always seem to meet. Oh, stop licking my face. Get out from under that bed, Tiny. Get up from there. No, no, don't stand up, you moose. Crawl out. Uh, down, Tiny, down. Uh, this is the last straw. I'll be doggone if this dog isn't gone tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, 
Of course I'm up. I didn't sleep a wink all night. How are you feeling, Uncle? Terrible. That dog curled up under my bed, and then the bed curled up. <laughs> he didn't give me a chance to shut an eye. Did you try counting sheep? I did, but Tiny kept chasing him around the room. <laughs> Gee, that's too bad. It's all right. We're going to take this poison puff back to Piggy Bank's house today. But Uncle Moore... I won't hear a word, Leroy. Oh, I've got a splitting headache from lack of sleep. What time is it, anyway? Gee, Uncle Moore, it's half past 11 already. What? Out of my way, Leroy. I've got a 9 o'clock appointment. I think he's hungry again. Uh, again? Yes. No wonder Piggy gave him to you. Tiny's appetite is enough to break the banks. In fact, we've got to find someone to palm him off on before he eats us out of house. See who it is, Leroy. Sure, Unc. Stay where you are, Tiny. Yeah, he will. It's Ted Hooker. Come on in, Judge. Well. Uh, good afternoon, folks. Well, look at the beautiful dog. Christmas present, Leroy? Yeah, isn't he a humdinger? Hello there, old boy. <laughs> How are you, pal, huh? Good old doggy. Sweet old pup. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? Oh, don't you pay any attention to him, old boy. My, I wish I had a little puppy like you. Oh, you do, eh? Well. Why, <laughs> uh, yes. Did I say something wrong? Better be careful, Judge, or we'll let him take you home. <laughs> Why, I'd be tickled to death to have him. How about it, old man? Want to come home with me and bite into a nice, big, juicy steak? <laughs> Get this elephant off of me. Cut that out, you. Stop, stop licking my face. Hey, take your feet off the nice man's shoulders. Stop, Get me up from here. Yeah. Call off your dog, Leroy. Help. Help me pull him off the judge. Yeah. 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 Now, let me give you a hand up, hooker, old chap. Don't you hooker, old chap, me, Gildersleeve. That's a dangerous dog you got there. You're telling me. He attacked me entirely without provocation. He had plenty of provocation, Judge. You mentioned S-T-E-A-K. Yes, Judge. This is a smart dog. You've got to spell out F-O-O-D. If you can't pronounce what you're talking about. Gee whiz, I guess the judge won't take him now, Unc. Oh, so that was your game. Trying to stick me with his hamburger hound. <laughs> Get away from me, Tiny. I'm glad I caught on in time. What do you mean, you caught on? Why, you couldn't catch on to a hippopotamus with a plunger in each hand. Oh, I couldn't, huh? Look who's talking. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, the Summerfield version of Dumbo. Oop. One more ill-bred remark, Judge Hooker, and the governor will be up all night trying to pick your successor. Go on, go on. I'm not afraid of you, you big gas bag. Oop. Just about 97% hot air. Is that so? Why, you little prehistoric dodo? Say, what's the other 3%? <laughs> Pure, unmitigated gall. Yeah, thanks very much. Why, you little prehistoric dodo? I'm going to pin your ears so far back you'll even look like a jackass. That's enough. That's enough. I'm leaving. Goodbye, Leroy. Uh, Are you sure you won't take Tiny Judge? I wouldn't have him if you gave me the Mississippi River and threw in your uncle besides. <laughs> goodbye, Tiny. And if Gildersleeve doesn't feed you right, bite him. Yes. Goodbye, Judge. And the next time we meet... <laughs> oh, down, Tiny. Wrong kind of meat. <laughs> Oh, well, I bet he wouldn't have given the dog a good home anyway. Oh, Mr. Gilsby, the Eggman wants his money. Eggman? Oh, yeah, send him in, Bertie. Now, hold on a tiny Leroy. He probably likes eggs, too. <laughs> Come right in, sir. Uh, how much is the bill this week? Two dollars and thirty-three. That includes the chicken. What's the matter, Tiny? Don't you like chicken? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a mighty fine-looking dog you got there, Sonny. Well, I'm beginning to have my dogs. Oh, yes, yes. Isn't he a fine-looking dog, sir? Yes. I suppose you have a nice farm where a dog can romp to its heart's content. Uh, lots to eat, no trouble with the fussy neighbors. No, ain't had to fall out with the neighbors since, uh, let me see, guess must have been the April of 1912. Yes. Uh, I remember it as clear as today because Brian was running for the first, third time. Uh, later, Lum, later. Yeah. Uh, did I hear you express admiration for this imposing canine of yours? No, but Ours. I certainly like that dog. Yeah, pardon me. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of a hound a friend of mine gave me in 1906. Or was it 1907? Yeah. No, 1907 was the year of the panic. Yeah. I got married that year, too. <laughs> Eh, uh, what a year. Yeah. Oh, yes, twer, twer. Oh, seven. Got the dog for a wedding present. Yes, a dog makes a wonderful wedding present. Oh. I bet you'd like to have one like this to guard your uh, chickens at night. No, I don't need a dog for that. Huh? No, I ain't had a hen roost robbery since the summer of 19 and 22. Or was it 19 come, come, and... Come, 22 is good enough for me. Uh... <laughs> 
Do you think you could use this uh, nice dog? Why, I certainly could. I need companionship. Yeah? Uh, it gets kind of lonesome for me up at my place. Uh, All the children have grown and married and got kids of their own. And scattered to the four winds, I suppose. Nope, they're all sleeping and eating and fighting up at my place. <laughs> See, that's why I need companionship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we find that city life is a little too uh, confining for Tiny here. Yeah. We're looking for a good home out in the country for him. You'll take good care of him, won't you, Mr. Eggman? Of course I will. Yes, well, here's your money for the eggs. Now, let me get Tiny into your car. Hey, come on, nice doggy. <laughs> Gee, Unky wants to stay with you. He does? Uh, let me see. Oh, I know how we can get him to like you, Mr. Eggman. <clears throat> Suppose you tell me how you dispose of the livestock you raise on your farm. Well, with the pigs, I smoke ham, skewer bacon, grind sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Now, you start toward the door. Uh, how about the cows? Oh, I make chip beef, smoke tongue, yeah. and liver sausage. Yeah. Hey, there, don't get down off me. I'm an old fellow. Here, now. Keep it up, Mr. Eggman. You made a friend for life. Leroy, open the door. Come on, funny old man. No, stop. Head for the car with the door. Certainly peaceful around here since we became dogless. Hand me the newspaper, will you, Marjorie? Here you are, Uncle. Uh, thanks. Uh, hmm. Local beauty to give kisses with each defense bond purchased. <laughs> Think I'll go downtown tomorrow. I might buy a few bonds for investment purposes, of course. <laughs> What's this? To Marjorie. Here's a picture of that dog, Tiny. Tiny? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. There can't be two dogs that look that hungry. <laughs> Listen to this. Has anyone seen this dog? Lost, strayed, or stolen from the home of Cecil P. Upshaw, president of the Summerfield National Bank. A valuable young Saskatchewan moose hound. <laughs> Reward offered for return. Oh, my goodness. Leroy! What is it, Lord? Look at this paper. That dog is tiny. We've got to get him back to Mr. Upshaw. Well, gee, yes, that reward. Forget the reward. You realize that a lot of people know we had that dog? We've got to return that reindeer spaniel before we're arrested for, for dog napping. Yeah? And we better go right out to the Eggman's farm and get him back. That's right. Uh, get your cap and coat. Where does he live? I don't know. Do you, Marge? The Eggman? No, no. He's been coming here every Thursday for the past ten years, but he never said where he lives. Uh, does anybody know his name? No, I don't. Neither do I. Well, come on anyway, Leroy. Okay, but where are we going? We'll just have to drag all the chicken coops in the countryside for that bird. <laughs> the bird? That reminds me. Uh, Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, do you know where the Eggman lives? Yes, sir. Oh, fine. Where? On a chicken farm. Ex <laughs> I know that, but where? Do you happen to know his name? Oh, just a second. I think I have it right. Well, here. that'll be a little help. Hey, don't forget your overcoat, Leroy. Oh, I found it, Mr. Gillsleeve. I just looked on the side of the carton of eggs he brought today. Uh, that was using the old bean. Uh, what is his name? His name is Grade A Select. Yes. <laughs> I never saw such a narrow road in my life. Oh, look, Uncle Mort. Here comes a load of hay. Make a wish. Okay. I wish there was room for us to pass it. Yeah. All right, bossy. Uh, let us through the pasture, please, bossy. Well, shout up. That ain't no bossy. That's a bull. It is? Oh! Gee, let's give up, Unc. Just this one barn, Leroy, then I'm willing to call it quits. Uh, hello in there. Needn't shout, mister. I'm right here. Oh, excuse me. Well, uh, what is it? If we're looking for a man who... Why, it's you. Yeah, hello, Mr. Eggman. Do you remember that dog we gave you this afternoon? That big dog named Tiny? Sure, sure. Well, we've got to have it back. That's right. There's been some mistake. And uh, now we must return it. I'm sorry, folks, but I can't do that. You can't? Why not? Because that there dog of urine picked up and ran away. That's why. Oh. <laughs> Quiet, Leroy. It's after midnight. Try not to wake anybody, including me. What do you mean, Unc? I'm practically walking in my sleep. Oh, my tired. That certainly was one wild goose chase, Uncle Moore. Yeah, I know it, Leroy. And your poor, tired, weary old uncle apologizes. Skip it, Uncle. It was partly my fault. Leroy, if we wanted to stand here and blame ourselves, we'd never get to bed. Good night. Good night. Yeah. I don't think I'll bother to take my clothes off. Just my overcoat and hat and shoes. Well, I haven't the strength to get the coat off. Just the shoes and the hat. Won't hurt me to sleep in my hat for once. <laughs> or my shoes. <laughs> it, what's that? Great jumping jeeps. Tiny's come home to roost. 
Well, here we are, Leroy. Uh, come on, Tiny. Gee, Uncle Mort, Mr. Upshaw has a big place, hasn't he? Yes, very beautiful grounds, too. Uh, just a second, I'll ask this gardener. I say, my good man, where can I find Mr. Cecil P. Upshaw? Hi, Mr. Upshaw. What can I do for you? Oh, excuse me. My name is Gildersleeve. Mm -hmm. I brought a dog that I think is yours. Uh, Leroy, uh, bring Tiny here. Oh, there, Tiny. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Why, uh, it is my dog. Yeah, good. Oh, thank you very much. Where's he been? That's too big a subject to go into now, brother. Someday I'm going to write a book about it. <laughs> Why, oh, shame on you. Yeah. What do you mean by running away from home? Oh! I am greatly indebted to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Please accept my sincerest thanks. Gee, Uncle, no reward. Uh, uh, quiet, Leroy. I didn't come here for any reward. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the reward of the newspapers. Uh, yeah. If you'll wait where you are, I'll be right back. Uh -huh. Come on, boys. Yeah. <laughs> goodbye, Tiny. Yeah, goodbye, Tiny. Say, Uncle, I wonder what the reward will be. Huh? I bet he'll give us a lot of money out of his bank. Oh, no, Leroy. The most you can ever expect from a bank is a new calendar. I won't be surprised if we get one left over from 1941 I'm sorry I took so long, Mr. Gildersleeve But here's your reward uh, what? Here, you Come here, boy Tell... yeah. What? Did you mean that after all the trouble we had to bring oh. your blasted big beagle back You're returning him to us? Oh, no, this isn't tiny This is his sister, Tootsie <laughs> Oh! <laughs> get down, Tootsie <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, here's a timely New Year's resolution that's not hard to keep. And that's to cut down your food budget and do it in a very pleasant way. Here's how. Start using tomorrow. Delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, using parquet margarine is one sure way to economize on food without sacrificing flavor or food value. You see, parquet margarine is no ordinary margarine. It's a delicious-tasting modern margarine that's rich in food elements your whole family needs. Yes, you'll like Parquet's delicate, satisfying flavor, whether you use it at the table for pan frying or as a flavor shortening for baking. And you'll appreciate the fact that Parquet margarine is such a nourishing, wholesome energy food and a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. That's why economizing with Parquet margarine is no hardship but a mighty pleasant way to cut down your food budget. So, in 1942, resolve to try wholesome, nourishing parquet margarine. The modern margarine that tastes so good, yet costs so little. But remember, don't just ask for margarine. Ask for parquet margarine. Spelled P-A-R-K-A-Y. So, Marjorie, when we told Mr. Upshaw that we didn't want another dog, he gave us this. Oh, isn't that a beautiful basket of fruit? Yeah, it's got just about every kind you ever heard of. Yes, aren't those grapes luscious? Oh, and that pineapple, so ripe and ready to eat. Personally, I like the bananas the best. Yeah. All in all, it's the most beautiful calendar the Summerfield National Bank has ever put out. <laughs> Happy New Year, folks. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>